you for joining us. A momentous week in local politics with the inauguration of Governor Moore Healy. And you may have noticed in our coverage, swearing in the first elected female governor of our state was our guest this morning, who was herself elected to a fourth term as president of the Senate. She is Senator Karen Spilka of Ashland. Senator, good to have you here. Great to be here again. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. Happy healthy to you. So what difference will the citizens of Massachusetts see uh, because of the fact that we have a woman governor? Well, uh, you know, I, I, I know Maura Healy from working with her as attorney general, and I have to say uh, she's somebody who's smart, gets her facts right, works hard, rolls up her sleeve to collaborate to get the job done. And I think uh, she she's straightforward to the point, um, and I, I look forward to working with her and her administration for the people of the Commonwealth. I mean, Governor Baker was collaborative. Yes. Smart. Yes. Yep. Worked yep. hard to try to get his facts straight. Yeah. Uh, I'm just... I'm not sure what the difference will be or what well, we should I, expect. I think there's a different style, just okay. like, uh, you know, for any other person. Okay. Um, I, I look forward to, to working with a, a woman governor and a woman lieutenant governor, okay. frankly, though. Uh, I think it's very exciting. I think it's beyond time, and uh, yeah. I, I think we'll, we can get a lot done. Well, it's good to see us uh, dispense with the ridiculous glass ceiling that's right. been in place. So, in your acceptance speech for your uh, re-election re as Senate President, um, you made a number of points uh, about your agenda. One of them was you want a free community college. Uh, w what would that cost? What's your guesstimate about what that would cost? Uh, well, first of all, you know, when people ask me about the cost, I feel uh, my best and first response is, what is the cost if we do not do it? and do not allow all students to go to community college, which is often the entrance into a college career. Uh, we, we figure particularly uh, right now it would be approximately 50 million, give or take, uh, and that is certainly worth it, especially with the passage of the fair share amendment. Right. Uh, there will be more funding for public education, public transportation. Well, 50 million is a rounding error in the in the overall state budget. Uh, uh, Governor Healy has called for a free community college for students over 25. Um, why the difference? What's the difference? Uh, I, I don't know, and I look forward to, to working with her uh, on this issue to iron it out. So we, we both have the same values, same priorities in this area, which is very exciting uh, and makes it more likely that it's doable. Uh, I look forward to hearing why it's over 25 on her plan. I believe that we should open it up to all students because I'm hearing from so many uh, working parents parents of 19, 20 year olds who are opting to have to work instead of going to college to put food on the table to pay for mortgage or rent or whatever. And I think this is our future. By the way, would, would your plan be free tuition or tuition and fees, the whole ball of wax? Because sometimes the, at our public universities and colleges, the fees are more than the tuition. Right. I, I would like to do free tuition and fees. And fees. Because you're right. Fees okay. can be more. Yeah. So in the governor's inaugural address, a uh, whole laundry list of things she wants to do. Uh, massive subsidies for child care, full funding of the Student Opportunity Act. I know that's a cause of yours as well. More spending on mental health care and food security, hiring a thousand new MBTA workers, doubling offshore wind and solar targets, uh, one percent of the state budget dedicated to environmental and, and energy agencies. A, a, a long ago uh, U.S. Senator once said a billion here, a billion there, pretty soon you're talking real money. Is there any cause for concern that that we're getting out over our skis a little bit with all of this spending now being potentially being baked into the base. 
Well, you know, I think certainly this will take a lot of discussion, negotiation, and working through these issues, and probably some prioritizing. Uh, in the Senate's, uh, in, in my inauguration speech, or, or swearing-in speech on Wednesday, and in the past, the Senate has already passed uh, early education and care reform uh, to uh, put a lot more funding, hundreds of millions more, towards our early ed providers, our workers, our families, to help our kids. Uh, and and we can afford right now to do this. Um, we we I, I believe can can do the public higher education uh, and invest in all of our public higher education institutions. I believe that we we have put more funding towards uh, our clean energy sector, which we need to keep going to make sure that we meet our 2050 net zero goals. That's something that we all uh, agree on in terms of our values and our priorities. So a lot of this will be sitting down with the governor and her administration, the speaker and myself, and, and, and working this through. Because we've got to take a break, but the, the windfall of billions in federal stimulus aid that's making much of this possible, that's a one-time deal, right? right. That'll, in a right. few years, that'll be gone. Uh, and, and so that's, I think, the concern that some people have is uh, we're making all these commitments. Those won't go away, but maybe the money will. Well, do, you, do you share that as a general concern, or is that overblown? Well, I believe that we ha we have to, under our Constitution, have to have a balanced right. budget. And uh, since I was chair of Ways and Means, I have really tried to ensure that we have had a fiscally sound, responsible budget. So not only have we increased in some of our programs and services, but we've continued to stock away at our rainy day fund. And we now have among the highest I that we've ever had and the highest in the nation percentage-wise and we will continue to monitor that so it will continue to be a balancing act to ensure that we continue to uh, do the programs and the and the services that that our people want and deserve but also remain remain fiscally responsible